First and foremost, I'm super excited. You have no idea who we have on the show today. We have the GOAT, Tom Izzo. He is going to be on Courageous Conversations Unlimited, and we're about to have a conversation right before they get ready to play Kansas State. Like, a lot of stuff's getting ready to happen. And then we also have my mentor, one of my good friends, Mike Garland. Hey, guys, how you guys doing, first and foremost? How you doing? We're both I'm doing, doing. I'm doing well. Yeah, as usual, I'm like trying to more speak like a to jackass than a goat, but whatever you call me, I'm <laughs> oh boy, hey Keith, I mean, boy, who would ever thought when we when we first started this whole thing that um, you know, 25 straight years in the big dance, it's an incredible accomplishment something no one else has done, uh, no other coach, no other program. Can you reflect on that a little bit? Yeah, I remember when I first got the job. In fact, I remember when you and I were in college together and, yeah. and I said, one of us get a job, we got to hire the other one. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Derek, I got the job. I go down to hire him. God, I had to sell his wife, his kids. I mean, everybody, <laughs> it, it took me three days to get him to commit. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I did. It was it was a harder recruit to land, but uh, <laughs> now, nah, you know, Mike joined us right away early and, uh, you know, we just kind of ham and egged it those first couple of years, trying to learn how to do it. And we had some things going. We got a great recruit, Mateen Cleaves. He kind of was the Pied Piper that uh, dragged a lot of other guys, Charlie Bell, Morris Peterson, Antonio Smith. And, and, you know, then it started growing. And uh, it's why we always say that the player coach team's better than a coach coach team because, you know, players can recruit players. And he got Jason Richardson. And uh, there were so many good guys, Andre Hudson, David Thomas, you know. And we uh, put together a little string there, Mike, right? And uh, yeah, once we, we started did. winning, you know, we won four Big Ten championships in a row, won a national championship. And then... And then I realized what they told me. It's harder to maintain than it is to build. Yeah, that's true. Right, right. But it's been good. It's been all good. And, and you know, Chief, uh, that applies to anything someone would do in their life. You know, it, it really does. And uh, too many people uh, mm -hmm. just run away from the process. And that's where what I loved about your leadership. You made us stick to the vision that we set. And you, you allowed us to, to be part of that process. But then once we made that decision on what it was going to be, you held everybody accountable to that. And it was, it was great. Well, you and I talk all the time, you know. I think it's some of the things that are lacking right now a little bit in society is accountability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't care what you're doing and I don't care who's listening. It can't. Doesn't have to be sports people. It could be people in business, people in life, yeah, exactly. uh, fathers, mothers, family people. Everybody's got to hold people accountable because um, the young people don't know, nor did any of us three. No. I mean, we didn't know right. what was going on when we were 17, 18, 19, and we thought we did. But yeah. we <laughs> and uh, when I look at some of the guys and how they've turned out, and, you know, we go from everybody, right, Mike, the managers, oh, student secretaries. Yeah. The, the, the walk-ons, the Matt Ishbias of the world, you know, we look at right. all of them. You go through a, and sacrifice a little bit and learn how to work. I think it benefits you for the next 60, 70 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I want to uh, add a couple of thoughts to that because, you know, I can tell by your leadership, to be totally honest, you really invest in everybody. It doesn't really matter who it is. Everybody gets the same energy from you. And that, to me, talks about your character, talks about your leadership style, talk about how much you actually care about the, the players and the people that you are really leading. And that's a big deal. Can you speak a little bit about that? Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, you know, Mike and I talk a lot about, um, you know, 
it's harder for people to trust people. You know, that that's a tough deal. And some kids come from homes where they never had a father. Some kids come from homes that it wasn't quite as smooth. And that doesn't mean they can't be successful. They just have to learn how to trust people. Right. And the only way you trust people is that people spend time with you. So I think one of the things we try to do here and we try to do it all the years is assistant coaches, head coaches, try to spend time with our players. You know, when there's problems, don't avoid them, uh, seek them, understand them, you know, try to hold people accountable, demand it, and then, and then hold them accountable to change it. And that's, that's not easy all the time, but it's, uh, right. it's beneficial if you can learn how to do that. No Absolutely. question. Uh, let's jump on, um, you know, this season and let's, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, some basketball here. Chief, at what point this season did you realize that this team had uh, had the abilities or a chance to make a deep tournament run? Well, you know, in the, in the years that you were with me and even now, every year you got, it's a new team, you know, and you, if you lose a right. leader, you don't know. And I mean, it's players that play the game, you know, coaches get credit, but players play the game. And, and players are the ones that have to hold each other accountable because we could be with them as much as we can. And we aren't with them in the locker room or in the apartments or when they're out to the movies or, you know, it's players that got to take care of that. And so that's one thing, you know, and I, I'm always trying to hunt for leaders, you know, right. thank God I'm in, I'm at a school that might've had one of the greatest leaders ever in Magic Johnson. I didn't coach him, but learned a lot from him. And then I right. had one of the greatest leaders ever in Mateen Cleaves. Right. Uh, and, uh, I just realized how influential he could be in dragging other people along. And that's really what you got to do. A lot of people just worry about themselves. The great ones worry about others. And uh, that's kind of, you know, that trust factor, the only way you can get it, spend time with them, you know, and get to know them and get to know the things that, uh, that make them tick. And, and I always tell them, they got to get to know me too. You know, and right, absolutely. And that's kind of good relationships are built that way, you know, with your wife, with your own kids. I mean, that's the way it works. Well, you yeah. know, you 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 mentioned leadership and um it's so important. I mean, I know firsthand how important it is um to you and to to actually winning and having success. And it seems to me within the last month you've really done a tremendous job with A.J. Holgert and mm -hmm. developing him into a leader. I mean, I every game, I just see the growth in him in that particular area. Can you talk a little well, bit yeah. about A.J. and how you guys did that? Well, you just said the key word, how you guys did that. There were many mm -hmm. meetings with our staff. I think the whole right. staff was involved in it. I've always been a big believer. If your quarterback is not good, how is your team going to be any good? And right. if the head dies, the body follows, I always say. So uh, you do need somebody leading you. It's getting harder to find leaders. And AJ is one of those guys. He's got some great leadership qualities, but he's got some other ones that at times, you know, right. going to right. take care. He hasn't been a problem. It's just right. staying focused. And that's most kids' problem right now, staying focused long enough to uh to do some special things and i think after a bad game at ohio state we had a staff meeting with aj and all of us were in it mm. my whole staff and i think right. there was no yelling no screaming it was just talking to him and kind right. of telling him, this ain't gonna work for you or for us mm. since then he's been better but i mean you know and i know right it's a never-ending fight you know but Every as long as guys are progressing and not regressing, it's worth the fight. It's when right. nothing, when things stay the same or go down, then you're in trouble. If they're making a little progress, then it's all part of the process. And some do it in a year. You know, we had a guy, Morris Peterson, it took three years. <laughs> and look at how right. it turned out. Yeah. You know, he turned out pretty yeah. good. And uh, you know, so everybody has a different process and that's one thing i learned in the tragedy we had on campus talking to the psychologist psychiatrist that mm. everybody handles covid or a tragedy differently and 
Right. Right. We kind of want to make it cookie cutter, you know, where, okay, this is how it is. And probably not always that way. And that's, I'm, I'm probably not great at that either. I, I, I have to learn that uh, everybody handles things a little differently. You know, um, and so I have a couple of thoughts I want to share, Coach, because it, it pops into my mind. Obviously, uh, the Big Ten, the conference is, uh, uh, I mean, it's one of the tough, toughest conferences in the country, right? Right. And now you guys have, uh, overcome, which you always do. You find a way, especially during the tournament, you find a way to get going. And so I really want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how how do you continue to build the guys and get the momentum to win and continue to win when you're playing for a national title? Because that's where you're headed. You know that, right? You hit it. You hit it for something special. Yeah, I think you went out there for a minute, but I think I got your question. Um, you know, I, I think it's 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 all part of the the process. Again, I keep using the same word, but you know, what we do is uh, we we really work on it in November, December, January. Try to figure out where our team's at, and then we uh, we go from there. And uh, you know, the things that we're not good at, we try to improve on. The things we are good at, again, again for. It happens all the time. We have the most losses of anybody in the Sweet 16, I was told. Right. I think six out of the eight times we had the most losses in the Final Four because we play a good schedule. We get our brain beat in a little bit. We learn from it. We know our warts. Figure them out. Mm -hmm. I worry about today's kid because I think we're in a society that failure is like, it's like a bad word. You know, we all failed. I mean, each one of you failed. I've failed a million times. And failure usually leads to separation. You know, are you going to fight through it? Are you going to go down with, you know, downhill? And uh, I think for the most part, we've helped guys, my staff and former players and and everybody that touches them have helped them fight through some things. And and then by February and March, uh, we're ready to put it to good use. No, that's great. That's great. That's great. You see, I put on my Michigan State. I got on the Sparta hat. I, I had to change from the Unstoppable to the Sparta, just so you know. I like it, man. It's yeah. the right time of year to get you, yeah. you going. I appreciate that. Yep. Well, maybe, maybe, but Chief, maybe our, our team will play like uh, like the uh, the insignia on his hat. It uh, stands for Unstoppables. And mm. his last name being Bowles, but Maybe we'll be unstoppables for the rest of the season. Well, but, it's going to um, be fun. It's going to be fun, Mike, to to see. We play a good team in Kansas State, but I'll tell you what: the team we just played, Marquette. I thought Shaka Smart did an unbelievable oh, job. Oh, you're unbelievable! I I, I I totally agree. They were really you good. Know, one of the things that I don't think uh, any of the listeners or or Spartan Nation, or anybody listening to this podcast realizes the the significance of what you do in the hotel to prepare for the games, the film and the walkthroughs. And, 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 you know, it sounds simple, but, you know, you've got every detail to that down, how much time to really spend on each segment. And it's, it's, it's a system, especially in a one day turnaround. It's it, nobody else in the country does anything like we, we do on, in, in that perspective. Can you talk uh, about that a little bit? Yeah. If you remember that started back when we played in our first one against Eastern Michigan, and then we played Princeton. Right. And one day we had to turn around the Princeton and, and what right. happens is your staff does most of the work, you know, right. the assistant coaches all have a team before we even get here. So exactly. somebody wins, somebody loses the managers. We have an incredible group of managers that, you know, our video guys, uh, you know, they put together the video, the managers, they chalk out the uh, tape down the floor here so we can walk through in the hotel. So we don't, especially in New York, you know, you don't want to waste time trying to go to a high school because it could be three blocks away and take you a half hour. Right. You know? so, right. So we right. do a lot right here in the hotel with film. We do a lot with walkthroughs. Um, it's kind of fun. It's fun to get my football, you know, Mark D'Antonio, Mel Tucker, 
have right. been in the room with us. And, uh, you know, they really kind of like that. You know, it's uh, the walkthroughs are great, you know, because you can put a court down and make it look just like the court you're playing on, just a little bit smaller. So we, uh, we do that. And it uh, creates a situation where we can rest, yet get work done. And that's kind of the key. Well, you know, it brings me to mind. Um, I heard you say on one of the interviews that, uh, you know, last week uh, you had some walkthroughs that were comparable to the Travis Walton walkthrough when we beat Louisville. I mean, that was unbelievable, Chief. I, I've never, I mean. It, yeah, neither have I. I mean, Mateen, <laughs> I knew he was ready that championship game, you know, but. Travis, when, when Mateen did it, we were we were really good, you know. Right. Travis, I think we were four or five seed, and Louisville was the ultimate number one seed. And right. He had those guys ready. They were like marching in to, to war, man. He came into the <laughs> game meal and yeah, he did. And, and he we did. just said, we're winning. You know, it yeah. was just the body language of people, and you could tell that. And uh that's where preparation is so important, you know, and reading body language. And I think. For the most part, you can really tell uh, when a team through the walkthrough or the film session is engaged. And that's a comforting feeling for a coach. Now, you still got to go out and play. You still got to make shots. But at least you sleep a little better knowing that your guys are ready to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Cynthia and I, Chief, were watching um, the Big Ten. Uh, we ran the special about our team last night, you know, that – that national championship team and it, it brought tears to my eyes man but um you know you you talk about body language i never will forget it and as you know it was always my job to go and get everybody make sure that they were ready to go and get to the bus on time and line them up and i never will forget that day of the national championship game i walked out of my room and i usually start about a half hour early Every one of them guys were standing on that rail and they looked me right now and said, Oh, gee, we ready to go. Yeah, I okay. knew then that yeah, we that's a, were going to win that game. Mm. Yeah, that's a good feeling, mm. you know, because the, the players are the ones that play it. And uh, this day and age, it's harder to get them focused as much. It's harder to get them, you know, focused on the task at hand. They got so many things going on with Twitter and, all these uh, electronics and, right. yeah. and this and that. Then you got the traditional ones of girlfriends, your buddies, your family. But absolutely, when you, when you add the other ones in there, um, it's a lot on their plate. So we've got to make sure that uh, you try to keep them as focused as you can. And that's getting to be the hardest task. And I would think the same with young kids in school. You know, I absolutely. my kids are older now, but I got a granddaughter coming and I'm, yeah, I'm sure that when that happens, uh, I'll be telling her to focus in every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I've always told you this. You know, I got eight of them, and it's gonna change. It's gonna change your life. You watch what I tell you, man. <laughs> what I tell you, brother. Yeah, you, you do know. have. You have enough to start pretty soon. Maybe they'll start a football team. The hell with best. <laughs> well, you know what. I got three little boys there, and uh, I tell you what, I, every one of them is stout built. And you know how much I love football, just like you do. So that would warm my heart for them to be able to do that. I'm serious. <laughs> man. I'm, I'm sure. Serious. I'm sure they will, man. They got they got good genes. You were you were <laughs> a good athlete, so they got good genes. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game tomorrow, guys. Uh, you know we right. uh, we're really. Uh, it's, it's, you know, no matter what you do, when that, when that ball goes up in the air to jump ball, that's when you really got to be ready. You know, you right. can be ready in all the other things, but you still got to be able to play the game. And, and I always said, you know, we coined that phrase up in uh, Syracuse, you know, you, you got what seems like minutes of, of work for years of memories, you know, yep. for a lifetime of memories. Yeah. Right. Life moments of, of work for a lifetime of memories. I do remember that. And, and that's, that's kind of where we are now, you know, when you when you're down to the weekend that can send you to a final four. Right. There aren't many memories that I have in basketball that are better than the final fours. And yeah. uh, 
So, you know, well, we got a chance now. We put ourselves in a position. We got a chance. There's 340 teams sitting home. And right. There's 16 left. And yeah, that's, we're yeah. one of them. That says a lot. Well, that's a well we're going to let you go, but I got one more question for you. Okay. And, um, you know, you'd never take credit for this. And I've always told you this. You're one of the best basketball minds to ever coach the game. And you, in fact, downplay that a lot. But you are. And, um, you know, one of the things that is very unique about you is that, you know, you have that you have the elbow block philosophy and stand in the gaps. And as I look at it, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that elbow block defense in today's game is going to have to be on point. Could you talk about that and how significant that will be for tomorrow night's game? Well, they got a five, eight, five, seven guy who's as quick as a hiccup. I mean, he's really good and he's, he can score it. He had 37 in the game. He had 27 against Kentucky. Mm. And he's one of those guys that's hard to defend by yourself. So our elbow gap, or you say our block and elbow block and our gap defense is kind of means that players are helping players. So Tyson might have him or AJ might have him, but we got two other guys. We call it the six eye rule. There should be six right. eyes on them at all times. Right. And if we do that well, I think that gives us a significantly better chance to win the game. Absolutely. So we'll see if we can do that, Mike. Uh, we'll see if we can get the ball going in the basket. <laughs> and maybe next week we can have another podcast and have some fun with it. Well, <laughs> hey, we again really appreciate it. I know, I know the value of your time. Uh, I tell you what, you know, most people in Spartan Nation know about our relationship. But for those uh, people out there listening that don't know, uh, Chief Tom Izzo and I, we go beyond a working relationship. We go beyond a friendship. Ours is a brotherhood. And uh, I, I think that he would agree with that as well. Well, it's only been 40 some years, so we got to have some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since those college days, you know. I, where I had to help carry that big afro you had around uh, those, those good old days but uh, now Mike it's been awesome Derek it's been awesome with you too thank you. And I thank you hope you guys have some success with this and uh, anytime you need me on I'd be honored to be on and I look forward to talking to you guys soon thank you oh, thank you thank you thank you very much all right see you guys take all care right. take care yep